So on our second day of class, we've got several things we need to talk about. I've got another handout for you. We need to look in detail at, at, a, at a handout I've given before. And um, we're going to get hands-on in that we're going to set up the webmaster tools this week. Last week I had said, hopefully you are able to bring your login information to log into your website to set this up. If you don't have a website, that's okay. You'll still be able to do some of these things. Once you get a website, you want to apply this to your website as soon as possible. Um, and if you, didn't, uh, if you don't want to do it in our public labs here, you can do it at home, of course. Just take notes and then uh, do it at home. So to remind us, as I said, I'm going to write some notes. You can write notes as well, or just take my notes at the end of the day. Uh, I have uh, the three pillars of SEO. I mentioned these last week, but it was so long ago. So can you, does anyone remind me? What were the three pillars of SEO that I mentioned last week? The hint is A. I'm sorry. Uh, longevity. Yes, thank you. Um, longevity. Authority. Authority. And content. So, how long has your website existed? Why should your website be ranked? And what is the stuff that you're creating? So those three concepts there will inform a lot of what we do, a lot of our efforts. And the search engines pay attention to these things as well as many other things, as we're seeing last week, this week, and the next week. And so the longer your online presence exists, the better. If you don't have a website that's existed a long time, you can counteract that with authority and content. Well, content is the stuff that you're creating. What are some examples that we talked about last week of the stuff that you're creating? I think I heard someone say blogs and uh, social media. That's content that you're creating. You're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, you're on Periscope, you're on social media. That's content that you're creating for the search engines to find. You're blogging. Maybe you're writing articles and such on your website on various topics. That's content. All of that content that you're creating is helping your authority. You're putting out this content that shows the search engines, well, we should rank this website well, because this Realty website is creating a lot of content about Realty, as opposed to that other Realtor that just has a website and a Hire Me button and nothing else. The one that's actually blogging and writing and tweeting and all of that is more valuable to people because they're more active, they're more current. We talked about those things last time. We'll reiterate them in different variations as the course goes on. Uh, part of the part of what we need to talk about then uh, regarding content and authority is based on this document that I gave you a little while ago. Um, let's uh, take a little time here to look at this client company profile. I mentioned it. I touched on it very briefly last time. We'll go into more detail this time, maybe write notes and examples. So you should have gotten the client company profile document from the network folder. Go ahead and open it up. That's a Word document. It should let you edit it right away. If it doesn't, there should be a button at the top that says Enable Editing. It should let you edit it. It is an editable document that you can fill in. And as I said previously, this is, a, this is a variation of what my company would do. What I said to people last week also was, I teach this stuff, but I also do it for a, a real company, um, our, our own company that we get hired to do SEO. We get hired to do social media. We get hired to make websites. So everything I teach at this college and wherever I teach is based on real stuff in the real world. So this is a variation of that. If my company were hired by a brand new bakery, 
well, we need to know as much as possible about the bakery in order to do SEO properly, in order to do social media properly. So we'll take a, a moment here. If you've got a company, you can fill this in. If not, you can just make it up or follow along. Let's say I've got a company called Victor's Bakery, which I'm going to optimize my name or the name of the client, whatever, John Smith. This is a document that we're going to create as sort of our foundation for other things, for other endeavors. However, this is not going to be something that you need to uh, fill in and turn in. You don't turn in anything for this class. You don't get grades. You don't get a certificate, etc. You get perhaps something more valuable, which is the knowledge of SEO. Today's date, because this document may change, so you want to get a copy of this without any edits just so that you can work on it again later if you'd like. If you pull it out of my network folder again, that's the original copy. This and another document I'll give later is for you to build the foundation of your company. Know thyself. You want to know your company as much as possible, define your company as much as possible, in opposition then for the competition. Last week we had an activity about competitor analysis where we were seeing what the competition was doing. Now we turn the mirror upon ourselves, or the lens upon ourselves, to see what are we doing? Where are we deficient? Where are we doing well? There's a spot here for a company name. What's the name of your company? Why did you choose it? Does it have a special meaning or story? An example, uh, this company Vic.co, pronounced Vic.co, and it comes from the name of the founder. So, sure, this can be filled in simply as Victor's Bakery. The end. That's okay. If I was going to give a grade for this, that'd be a C <coughs> plus. Nah, C minus. It wouldn't be a very good grade because you didn't try. You didn't answer anything else. I teach this class also at Southwestern College. Over there, it's 16 weeks long. Here, it's three weeks, sometimes four. Over there, there's a lot more that we cover and for grades and units and all of that. So this would have been an assignment over there that I would read, you know, print it out, curl up by the fireplace and read it, and then mark all over with grades. For us, we'll just talk about it in, in theory. And this is not good because part of what you're going to create online, your presence, is simply not your name. It's your presence. It's not simply your website. It's your presence. You're not trying to simply get traffic to your Facebook. It's your presence. Um, so here I've got the part about I've got the part about why did you choose that name? Is there a little story? Is there a one or two sentence story about why you chose this name? Simply Victor's Bakery is not a good answer. I would write something like uh, the name of the company is based on my grandfather's grandpa's name, uh, who was a big influence on me in the kitchen because he taught me everything I knew, blah, 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 blah. I'm writing some sort of story. Why is there that name? And yes, maybe it's as simple like I have here, Vic.co, because it's my name. It's my name and I chose it. But notice even on that tiny answer here, I'm saying, if I hadn't told you, how would you pronounce that out loud? Vic.co? Vic.co? People had different ideas to pronounce it in their mind. I spelled it out there in that document, Vic.co. That's how my name should be pronounced for that company. That's important because then that's how I'm going to talk about it on the website, on press releases, on interviews, on blogs, on podcasts. It's the brand. It's the presence of the company. It's not called Nike. That's the traditional Greek name. It's Nike. It's not Nike, it's Nike. So that's important, the pronunciation as well. All of these little aspects are important. Um, as much as you would want to write for this, it would be valuable because, again, defining your company, and then we will use this content on our About page on our biography blurb on Facebook, on a press release, all of these places to build up our presence, to build an authority.
It says content. Tagline. Think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines. Why do they stick? Your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable. Vic.co, a great company for your great website. Because just removing Vic.co from that tagline, you don't know what Vic.co does. Without me explaining that, you might have had an idea, <coughs> what does Vic.co do? It's so nebulous, it has no meaning built in. What the heck's a Nike? Forty years later, we know what Nike is. But in the beginning, what's, what's a Nike? What's a Starbucks? Oh, you must be a bookseller. Starbucks from, uh, or Starbucks from, from Moby Dick, right? No, a coffee company. So, originally, whatever Starbucks slogan was, whatever it is now, helped it to build itself as an entity for coffee. So, for example, just do it. Now, just do it has a meaning attached to Nike. It's inseparable. But if there hadn't been a Nike, that slogan there could have been applied to everything, or anything. Uh, John's Tax Prep Service. Just do it. See that? That could apply to it. your tax company. Just do it. For your company, it is valuable to have a one-sentence phrase about what your company does, especially if its name is not obvious. Victor's Bakery is obvious. It's a bakery. Vic.co is not my own company, PMD Interactive. That's not really obvious either. Interactive? Is that about video games or something? Well, it's uh, PMD Interactive, uh, web design solutions for every budget. You know, it has uh, an explanation further. For uh, Victor's Bakery, it's self-explanatory, but it's still valuable to have a tagline because of what we talked about previously, the long tail keyword strategy. So I could have Victor's Bakery. Family-owned bakery, in the heart of Eastlake, California. That could be a perfectly viable tagline for this fictional Victor's Bakery. Because it has the keywords of Eastlake, family-owned, you know, people that would be searching for those. There might not be a lot of family-owned bakeries. Maybe th there are a lot of family-owned bakeries, but they don't think to put that as a differentiator. There's all of these big bakeries out there, but maybe I'm looking for one that's small. I don't want to patronize the big, soulless bakeries. I want to go to the mom-and-pop shop on the corner, and I want to search that on Yahoo, and I put those keywords. My site has those keywords. It might help me get found. Could do something else like organic bakery, specializing in new twists, old recipes. Depending on your company, the fame of your company, the competition of your company, this might be a very challenging thing to write. Because I would love it to be. Yum in your tongue. Victor's Bakery. I like that it rhymes. I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. But that might not quite work with all the competition. Who's going to search yum or tum or tummy on Google? They're going to search for organic bakeries in Hillcrest. They're going to search for uh, gluten-free recipes, um, you know, Father's Day cakes. They're going to be specific. That's the activity we had previously last week. Yes? In, in the old days of marketing for the internet, we used to always look for some kind of dominance in a certain niche. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yes, that's what we're going to try to build. We're going to try to build dominance, which uh, in one sense is our visibility. We're going to try to get visibility in whatever niche we're in. I'm a bakery. There's other bakeries through all over San Diego. I look them up on Google, there's dots all over the map. So I need to stand out from the rest. So something like this with such a young company is not going to help me stand out. But perhaps something that's more specific like that, for people that are looking for that product, could help me stand out. 
So for example, these two for the first five years, just to kind of pick a pick something here. And then you know, after ten years and fame. <coughs> then I can have a bit more of a prosaic tagline. I'm not saying that your current one right now is holding you back. I, I don't know your particular company if you even have a tab tagline. But I'm just saying this is something else to think about. SEO is not just keywords, put them on your website, let me show you where to click. That's not SEO nowadays. It's thinking about things from all aspects. Because there's so much competition from legitimate companies and spam. And for you to stand out, you need to attack this issue from all sides. I'll put this example document in the folder at the end of the day in case you want a copy of this as well. There's a section here about of about us. Write a paragraph about your company, who founded it, what is it about, when did you get the idea for it, where was it founded, why are you in this business, how will you make the company a success. These answers will help fill your biography on various sites also. If you're going to go off to Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Periscope, Vine, Meerkat, Peach, blah, 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 blah. If you're going to go to any of those social networks, it often has a spot for you to fill in a biography. Usually it's a paragraph or so, 100 to 160 characters. Or you might have a space to write a lot. That space for you is also for you to market yourself, for keywords to help you get found. The little Twitter biography. You can search in Twitter and put keywords in Twitter, and then you can search specifically show me Company, uh, companies on Twitter that have those keywords in their bio. So if I'm not taking advantage of that in any of my networks about us info, thinking in terms of keywords, that could be another reason you're not ranking so well. I won't give all of these examples here, but think about it. Who, what, when, where, why, how? The classic questions of journalism. So if you can fill in, if you have an answer for all of these, as many as possible, that's good. You can then use a sentence or two in the various networks or on the About page of your website. Let me do a little segue here. Recommendations. Four pages on your site. You should have a home page, of course. You should have a, um, an about page and a contact page. Home page is obvious. You need a page that someone visits. So your start page. It's the first thing the search engines see. Anyway, S E search engines. I'll spell it out. Search engines C. It's the first thing that search engines see when someone searches, and all of those all of those results appear. By default, the search engine will look on your homepage and extract some information and show it on the Bing results. The about page is also valuable. Used to fill in your bio info to build authority. Spammers don't have it. Spammers often don't have it. If a spam site does have an about page, it's probably stolen from some other related kind of company. Um, and the search engines, because they have computers they have farms of computers, like over at Bing or Google, it's, it's no big deal to have a room like this full of computers stacked to the ceiling, operating 24 hours a day, with barely any room to walk in, and that's just like one piece of Google. And those computers of the search engines are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, trying to analyze and find every single website in the world. And so if one website has some content, like an about page, and another website has the same content, that's a red flag, to the search engine. Why does this bakery site have the same About Us page as this 
shoe site. Well, that's a, probably a spam or a spam circle or something. And so both of those sites are going to be penalized. They're going to go lower on the search results. Duplicate content, basically. The search engines don't like duplicate content. Your original about page should not be the same about page as anyone else's. Any other different website, it's yours. It's your unique thing to get found. And you should have a contact page. A way for people, customers, to get a hold of you. Spammers don't have that. Any spammer can create a, a website. They go to Bluehost, they go to GoDaddy, they go wherever. They pay whatever amount of money and they have bought 10 websites. Um, EastlakeBakery.com, OriginalEastlakeBakery.net, kicksforyou.org, blah, blah, blah. They buy all of these spam websites, and on all five of them, they put the same thing to try to build more of an online presence. The wrong way, the bad way. And then they're not going to have a contact page. They're just going to put out their fake product out there, a PayPal button or whatever to take your money, and then there's no way to uh, get a hold of them when your product is not what you ordered, when you, have, when you need customer support. But you, as a legitimate company, you will have a contact page. The search engines will see that. The search engines will like that. The search engines will put that information when someone searches. We saw, when we searched last week, some websites had right there a little piece, phone number and address. Where does it get that from? Your website, for example. A contact page. The search engine will look for that stuff and put it on their search results. A few notes on these things. Choose about address instead of about us or uh, about the company or about me. This is a little bit more of a technical thing, but here's the example. Let's say I have victorsbakery.com. That's the home page. Someone visits the about page most likely the address will then be slash about. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to say prefer as opposed to about dash us or about the company or about the company the basic simple one up here is the one you should be focused on. This is becoming a, almost like a, a default standard. Many websites are using this method right here. I can go to twitter.com slash about and most likely it'll go to that about page. There's more and more websites that are doing it this way. The search engine is going to look for that. Not that these other ways are bad. This is perfectly fine. This one is not so good. I'll explain why in a moment. This one's okay. The shorter one is better because, again, it's becoming more of the standard. The about us and the about the company is just more... It's a longer address. It's more words that could confuse the search engine, possibly. Because this one, in this case, has a stop word. The search engines may or may not value stop words such as the, of, a, an. You know, those words that don't mean anything unless they're with a context. So to just keep it simple like this is the short answer. If your website currently has about us, or about the company, or something like about.html, I don't recommend that you change it unless you know what you're doing. That could cause broken links. The search engines don't like that. So I'm going to say, if you don't have the preferred address, don't change it unless you know what you're doing. Use a 301 
redirect. It's a technical thing that you have to do. That's why I'm saying don't do, don't change your address unless you know what the 301 redirect is, and I'll touch on it more detail later. But basically, you have to program your website to guide people to the proper address. So if you had Victor's Bakery slash about us, and I went into WordPress and changed it just to about, it's going to rewrite your address. So any traffic that you had going to about us is now going to hit a broken link. And the search engines will look at that and will track that. And there's no threshold that says if you've got seven broken links, you're going to drop down two positions. It's all relative, it's all trade secrets, but the, le the less problems your site has, the better, such as broken links. You've got 10 broken links, that may or may not be worse than having 11 broken links. But don't break your links like this. If, unless you know how to set that up, <coughs> redirects, don't change your links. Later on, uh, we'll talk about WordPress, which is the platform that I recommend to use. And there is a plugin that will monitor and fix this. So if you do need to change addresses, I'll recommend that plugin. If you moved from one address to another, I went from thevictorsbakery.com over to Victor's Bakery, that's broken links there. I can use 301 redirects also to help me uh, guide them to the right address to fix broken links. As for the contact info, um, the, the recommendation there is email, phone, and street address. Now, caveats. Your email address, don't put your email naked on the page. Don't go to your about page and then simply type victor at victorsbakery.com. Don't put it like that. Because every single uh, email address has a pattern of something at something dot something. Every email has that pattern. Robots, computers, search engines are very good at recognizing patterns. They can be programmed to do that very easily. Don't you think the spammers have software? that will go to every single website and look for that pattern? They do. And that's how your email address can start, suddenly get spammed. You put your email naked out there on, on a website or anywhere else, and these spam bots are looking for that pattern, collecting all of these phone uh, email addresses, and then selling them. Because someone thinks, oh, I need to buy an email distribution list. I need to reach my customers. You just bought a spam a spam list, which is not going to be valuable to you, and you spend a hundred or five hundred dollars or something on it. So don't put your email address naked out there. Instead, use a contact form. That's much more secure. Boxes that the person has to fill in on your site and click submit. Better yet, use a contact form with a CAPTCHA. You know what, the, you know what a CAPTCHA is? Those weird letters. Those jumbled letters, those colorized letters, those those you know, those random letters that you have to type to validate that you're a person and not a spam bot. One of the modern one of the most modern versions of that that I'm starting to see now is that it says, okay, pick the pick all of the cats from these six pictures. Have you seen those yet? I'm trying to send an email and it pops up first. Pick every everything here that's a tree. I get nine pictures and I have to click on all three or four or five tree pictures. How do you do that? Again, when we talk about WordPress, there's a plugin for that. How to add it to your site. There's probably ways to do it for other sites, or other software, Joomla, Wix, Dreamweaver, etc. But I'm gonna focus on WordPress, the biggest one of all. And perhaps during lab time and such, one-on-one, -on -one, we can look at your particular website and what it needs. But this is much safer than just putting your email address out there. And no, it doesn't help to also do this super secret trick right here. Victor at Victor.com. It doesn't work either. 
the computer can be programmed to look for that pattern too. Even if I'm trying to get really clever like this, that's still a pattern. And now the person doesn't know what I mean. <coughs> I put that into my Hotmail, it won't work. So don't try to obfuscate your address that way. A contact form will work better. It'll help prevent your spam, and it'll help your address not get found and sold to the spam email lists. Is there something like that for a phone number? Kind of. Look into Skype. You can get uh, a contact uh, phone and such from Skype. Yes, question? Um, so should your, the page in your website should it be named about or should it be a contact? Okay, yes, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, contact should be the same sort of thing. A short contact, like I have here. Your contact page should also be called contact. Rather than contact us, contact the company, talk to us. You know, these pages can be named anything, but again, I'm going to recommend for contact, also simply call it contact. Okay. So you can be either one, it doesn't affect the ranking or... You mean about us and contact? I mean about and contact? Or either one, or it just have to be both. You have to have both on your... Page. Yeah, I'm saying up here. I would recommend the home page, the about page, and the contact page. Oftentimes you can put contact info in the about page, but I wouldn't muddy those two concepts or blur those two concepts together. Keep the about information on the about page and keep the contact information on the contact page. So, um, so if we do have us no, if you have the wrong address, that's not going to affect you. What's what's helping you is that you have that. You have an about page. The, you know the other the spammers wouldn't have that. So right away you're already ahead of them. What its name shouldn't be so bad. If it does have about us, that's not so bad. The one that's bad here is this one about the company. This is a one word all run together. And the search engine counts that as one word instead of about the company. That's the bad one. Anything else is okay. That's the better one. And again, if you don't have that, it's okay at this point. Don't worry about it too much. Question. Okay, so why would you Skype? Skype uh, would be useful um, because do you want to put, okay, let's say my example, I'm running um, a graphic design company. Uh, out of my garage, uh, and I put a phone number on the website, and I and right now I just have a, a cell phone. That same cell phone is the cell phone that everyone contacts me at, my friends and family and my clients. So if I'm going to put my personal phone number up there like that, that's another sort of like, okay, you're kind of inviting spam, maybe. Let's say I do invest in a separate phone number. I buy another phone number for the company that is a little bit safer because it's not your personal phone number. If you get a, a Skype number, that's another extra layer of protection. You know, you have Skype, people can call there. That'll route the, the call. You can, what, you can answer the call on the computer and that sort of thing. You can answer the call on the Skype app rather than getting to a call directly to your phone number and getting your phone number out there for everyone. Um, no, you can have a conversation on Skype, either video or audio. Okay. But, you know, get, put a curtain in the back and stand in front of it. <laughs> put a curtain back there that looks like you're looking out over the New York skyline. And say, oh, Vic.co, New York based. The other alternative to Skype is Google Voice. This is another one. Um, what what Google Voice is? You go you you go to the Google Voice website, and you can claim a phone number. And then that phone number is attached to one or more real phones. So you give out this brand new phone number, and you might be able to get something like six one nine one two three cake. You might be able to get that. So people call that, and it rings the phone, the office phone, it rings the phone in my pocket, 
and it rings the phone of the other person in the company. It rings for everyone. So then whoever answers it, answers it. But your AT&T given phone number, Verizon given phone number, is shielded. People are going to see and call 619123K, not your real number. And with Google Voice, what's cool also is you can just set it to go directly to voicemail. It doesn't ring anyone. It goes to voicemail, and you can create a voicemail message that says, Welcome to PMD Interactive. We're sorry we can't talk to you right now. Please leave a message, and we'll get back to you. They leave a message. You get a notification in the app. Everyone gets the notification in the app. You listen to the voicemail, and you deal with it. You call them back. You text them back. You can text on Google Voice as well. And to my knowledge, at the moment, it's free. So it might be valuable to get a Google Voice. Does anyone have a Google Voice number? OK, so if you have, you've probably seen its value. Uh, so um, I would look into that. <coughs> and then lastly, for street address. OK, I'm running my business out of my garage. I'm not going to put my, my real home address there. I'm going to perhaps think about investing in a PO box. I believe my local post office is selling P.O. boxes for $80 a year. I think that's either the second or the second smallest or the smallest box, $80 a year. Um, I think I remember it was $75 last year, so there is an investment there, uh, literal monetary investment. But any of this business stuff could be a business write-off. Now, I'm not a CPA or a tax pro or anything like that. I'm not giving any advice. You look into your own tax preparation software or person and look into about writing all of this off for your taxes. But very basically, business expenses within reason can be claimed on your taxes to help you know, your tax burden and such. So that $80 a year could be claimed as a business expense. Again, check with your professionals for the full answer. But you can put a PO box on that about page because Think about yourself when you want to get a hold of a company for customer support. Some of you are going to want to talk to a person. Where's the phone number? Some of you are going to be content with sending an email. Some of you are going to want to contact them via uh, classic mail, snail mail. So we're giving people a way for them to contact you. And uh, we're showing the search engines also that we are legitimate. We're not just a fly-by-night spam company. Here's a way for real people to contact us. Now, perhaps with a P.O. Box, I've seen P.O. Boxes all the time, you know, like when they're trying to sell as seen on TV stuff. Uh, buy it now, P.O. Box, one, two, three, five, seven. And I think P.O. Boxes do have a little bit of, uh, perhaps, of a notoriety that, yes, any, you know, classic spammer can make a P.O. Box. The modern P.O. Boxes now let you, instead of having P.O. Box, you know, one, two, three, now I believe everyone can do this. I know my local one lets you do this. You can put the address of the post office, 830 Kun Drive, number 1233, San Diego, California, blah, blah, blah. So if I see an address that's P.O. Box 123, San Diego, California, that might look spammy. But the P.O. Box now, the post office, the U.S. Post Office, now I believe lets everyone put the address of the post office and then the box number. That looks much more legitimate than the, the P.O. Box. I don't believe Postal Annex lets you do that. I don't believe mailboxes, etc. lets you do that. I, I know the post office, the USPS, lets you do that. So again, this is to build your authority. And lastly, the, uh, the contact info could also be a spot for social media. So your Twitter address, your Facebook address, your Google Plus address, your Instagram address, your your Snapchat address, whatever, etc. Whatever social media you're on, you've got a spot there for now the new generation that wants to contact you in a different way or to follow you 
on these social networks. There's so many of them out there. You can be on as many of them as you want, and you should be on a few. Very briefly, perhaps, if I put it in this order, put it in this order from the latest stats, the value Facebook might be the most valuable network for you to get on. Facebook is a double-edged sword. We would talk about it in more detail in the social media class. It's double-edged in that you can reach so many people, but then you have to compete with so many people for your company to get found. Next is Instagram. Uh, they just announced that they've reached 500 million users on um, Instagram. Twitter has 320 million or so. Twitter's been around 10 years. Instagram's been around probably like four years now. Instagram's really taken off, especially after Facebook bought them. If you didn't know that, Facebook owns Insta Instagram. And Facebook has about 1.6 billion users. Snapchat, I don't know the number at the moment. That's probably another 100 million, 200 million. Google Plus, that one's a hard number because Google doesn't quite reveal their number exactly, but 200 million to 600 million users on Google Plus. They all have a value. The more of these you get on, I did mention a bunch of other ones, LinkedIn and all of that. They're all good. But the problem is, do you have time to do it? Just because you create the account and you use it for a few weeks and then you then you forget about it, that's not helping you. you didn't even need to create it if you're not going to use it. But you should create these networks and use them. Take the social media class for all of the details on that. That's more of your contact info. More content that you're then going to create here as you tweet, as you post, as you snap. That's content that could be found to improve your authority uh, so that you can get the traffic. Is that also a widget that you can use for the contact form? Yeah, uh, WordPress uh, has various widgets for it to show all your all your networks either simply a link to the network or maybe a dynamic one that shows your latest tweet mm -hmm. there should be a plugin for that as well What's the name of that particular widget? there's so many of them um, often to, I can't really give an answer because it widgets also depend on the theme that you have mm -hmm. perhaps your theme came with one too and if not then we can research ones that are compatible <sighs> So that was our segue to talk about the About Us section here. Any questions on this stuff? So again, you fill in that as best as possible at some point. You're going to use it on your site. Related to About Us is a mission statement, right? Something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why should they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. Let's say Victor's Bakery. Victor's Bakery believes in using the freshest, authentic, freshest and authentic ingredients to put the yum in your tongue, etc., etc. A statement couple of sentences, one short paragraph, mission statement. What is the mission? What is the purpose of this company? You can be direct, you, know, you can be lit, uh, literal or figurative when you write this, that's fine. It's another spot for you to be creating keywords and such. What you write here, though, should be more in terms about what you're, what you're doing, ta <coughs> tangible things, real things. You're not going to go too overboard on this to you know, create false advertising. So let's say Apple's uh, mission statement. I'm sure it's something like, and we can look it up. Um, well, let's look at an example here. The college has a mission statement right on their home page, this college. I'm going to take a quick look at what the college's mission statement is. It's at the very bottom of the screen right there. To provide ongoing learning opportunities, preparing diverse individuals for career advancement, a college education, or enriched lives, through good health and personal fulfillment. So the mission statement could have easily been to give free classes. The end. 
but notice it's a little bit more artistic or prosaic and also saying <coughs> enriched lives. You know, there's a key word there that evokes something that is a little beyond than just free classes. It goes on to talk about learning opportunities. Free classes, learning opportunities. Diverse individuals. It's showing here the commitment to diversity that the college believes in. Career advancement. I'm trying to advance my career. I'm stuck in this job for 10 years. I need to advance. I need to learn no, new skills. That's what this college is about. That's what I need. Resonates with me. Um, and there's a longer one right there. You should look at that. You should look at the websites, the mission statements of many of these sites. Look it up for Nike, McDonald's, Sephora, um, Chipotle, mm. all of these companies. Look it up. Go to the website and somewhere there under the About section, sometimes it's under Investor Relations. Go to these sites and look for these mission statements and things, perhaps to get ideas. And if we go here, there's vision statement, philosophy statement, core values, the short version of mission, the long version. Keyword lifelong learning opportunities. Yes. Um, Let's maybe jump in again, but does that still apply to international websites? Or it's trying to get seen by international It does, definitely. SEO will work and it's something for you to think about for all your demographics. If I'm trying to get found in one country as opposed to another, yes. For some countries it might be easier or harder. Some countries, you know, the population of websites there doesn't think about this. So it might be easier, a lot easier to rank higher when people search in that country because you have less competition. In, in other places like the US, England and such, where there's much more web savviness perhaps, then it's harder to get ranked. But definitely this is valuable for all demographics. So Victor's bakery believes in using the freshest and authentic ingredients to put the young in your tongue. We are committed Again, the language that we're, that we're writing here, we are committed. You know, how that's something to think about also. What kind of voice are you going to have on this, on these documents that you're, that especially people are going to see? Um, I was over at um, Sprouts, and their terminology there is very casual. If you, if you look at the part where you're going to, I don't know if they have it everywhere, but where you're going to pay, I saw a little placard there that says, Sprouts accepts these forms of payment. And the first one said, cold hard cash. So literally, it said that, very casual. Then it said checks, personal checks, uh, credit cards, debit cards, etc. So what's the voice that your company is using? That'll, we'll have a deeper talk about that later because we need to think about how are we communicating? Uh, a daycare company's text is going to be different than a tax preparer's text. And I wouldn't want those to be flipped around. One would be very stoic, and I don't want that for the daycare center. And one would be very fun and jovial, and I don't want that for the tax prep business. We are committed to making the best for you and your family. And you might not be able to write something here again very artistic. It may be very straightforward. That's fine. Whatever you're writing here, whatever you're thinking about here is going to be valuable. This stuff here that we're talking about, you know, the long version of this for our company is something that's worth a couple thousand dollars. This document itself to, to define in order for us to then get hired to do a good job for the company. This could easily be thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a big company. When Pepsi is going to do a rebranding, that's going to cost millions of dollars, and they're going to have a room full of people thinking about all of this stuff and another document I'll give you later. People go to college and get a, and get a, a bachelor's or a master's or a doctorate, I guess, in all of this marketing stuff. This is a huge thing. Marketing, advertising, convincing people about something. This mission statement, yes, it's artistic, but it's also reaching out to the people that care about you know, the best baked goods with the freshest ingredients 
the person, not to put it down of course, but the person that goes to Dunkin' Donuts wants a particular kind of donut as opposed to the person that goes to Stardust Donuts in Imperial Beach. That one has a very select clientele. Stardust Donuts? How many of you heard of Stardust Donuts in IB? No? You should check it out. It's a very good donut shop. I don't work for them at all. And uh, Dunkin' Donuts, okay, they've been around decades, and they're profitable and all of that, but I don't want to go to Dunkin' Donuts donut shop. I want to go to Stardust Donuts because of the mission statement and all of that, and all of that authority and content of a, of a particular business. Values. What are some keywords? that your company believes in, like orderliness. So this is going to think about keywords in a different way. Orderliness, teamwork, discipline, efficiency. So these are like business keywords. These are not exactly keywords like SEO keywords, although they are to some degree. These are like the keywords, the values that my company cares about because I'm trying to find people to buy my product that also care about those things. The people that shop at um, Whole Foods care about produce in a way that perhaps the people that shop at Kroger's care about it in a different way, uh, or, or Safeway, or whatever. Uh, so um, those keywords, efficiency, creativity, this is going to reach a person that cares about those things. And so there's a link there for you to go look at more examples of keywords picking a you know half a dozen or ten of them or so that's also going to help you when you create the content content of the tweets and other thing you're going to write about discipline about efficiency about diversity about etc cetera, etc cetera. oops what is this epic soccer training a review on oh, experience is that a broken link Might have to update my link there, but what you can do is search uh, business values key, uh, list or keywords, examples, core value list, 500 examples, seven core values, company culture, 100 core values. So these keywords, these concepts also are to reach the right, the right eyes. Risk taking. I don't want that keyword for my tax preparer, but I want that for the uh, sports drink company that I like to patronize. Search for business values list. Personality. Think of your company as a person. How would she or he communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. So uh, the companies that people choose to follow on social media, people follow Chipotle, Nike, McDonald's, Pepsi, etc. They follow them for a reason because of what they share, what they put out there, their product, their personality. The personality of one fast food joint compared to another one. I might want to follow one that's a lot more fun and friendly. Like the one that's got a big personality, Burger Joints, in and out Burger. That one's got, you know, a very Southern California laid back kind of style. It's in all their branding. Palm trees, cars from the 50s, etc. Another burger joint, of course, McDonald's, Five Guys, Burger King, they've all got this style, this personality. They're all selling hamburgers, but they're selling them in different ways. A personality. Their branding and their style and logos and graphics and text and everything is according to that personality. All of this is coming together here. Mission, values, personality. How are you tweeting? How are you writing the about page? How are you writing your blogs? How are you writing on, what are you writing on the home page? It's all related to this, to these things. So let's say for Victor's Bakery. Victor's Bakery, we are a down-to-earth bakery. 
taking the recipes of our grandparents and putting a new spin on them. Our interpret interpretations of <coughs> baked goods are second to none. Is obviously personality something very subjective because it's a company not a person or it's made of people with diverse personalities but we're putting a personality to the company as a whole because we're trying to attract a clientele and lastly fundamentals list the company address website email contact address and any social media that exist or will exist. So this is just, again, for your records here to put it all in one easy place. I need to share these addresses all the time. I keep forgetting what the address is because maybe over on Twitter, you know, we are twitter.com. I would say I'm on uh, Facebook and I do have Victor's Bakery, but then over on Twitter, we, we weren't able to get the name properly, so we're Victor's Bakery SD. And then over on, on Instagram, we're you know, twitter.com uh, Victor's Dash Bakery. I don't know. I'm just saying we're going to write down all of these addresses of your profiles to have them handy in one location. Regarding social media, Thoughts on social media for SEO. Claim as many profiles as possible. Claim your name on Facebook as soon as you can. Claim your name on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. Those that I mentioned there, there's LinkedIn, of course. Claim your name on as many of them. At least claim your name. You don't have to use them, but claim your name because maybe one day this... Uh, the Snapchat thing will be bigger than Facebook. And if you didn't get your name and some teenager got it before you, you're not going to be able to get it back. Especially if they're using it legitimately. There's so many examples of a real legitimate company that has to settle for, you know, Victor's Bakery 1. Because Victor's Bakery was claimed three years ago. And they haven't used it in one year. These networks really have to clean things up because there are Twitter profiles and Facebook profiles that haven't loaned that have, uh, that have laid uh, dormant for months, if not years, and no one's using them, and, face and Facebook and Instagram and all of these don't seem to really care too much at the moment to release those names out again for someone that really wants them. They do do that for the big names. So if you're Jim Carrey, if you're you know, Channel 8, if you're the White House, yeah, you'll get, you're going to get that name. But little old Victor's Bakery and such, I'm going to have to be the Victor's Bakery because Victor's Bakery was taken from someone else that hasn't used it in years. And I can complain to Twitter and all of that, and probably nothing is going to happen. So claim as many professors as possible, so no one else does. Use the profiles as often as possible. That's a lot of effort, of course, there. We just claimed all those five networks and we need to use them all? Yes. Every week? Yes. It's a lot of work. So I'm going to focus on Facebook. All my efforts on Facebook. All my efforts on Twitter. All my efforts on Instagram. On LinkedIn. Whatever. Choose one, but then use it. What to post, how to post, all of that, that's a discussion for the SEO, uh, for the social media class. and try to have consistent names on the profiles. If you were able to get Victor's Bakery on three out of four, 
and the fourth one I had to stick an SD at the end, guess what? You're giving free traffic to the other Victor's Bakery. Because you're building this presence, and on Facebook, you're Victor's Bakery. On Twitter, you're Victor's Bakery. But on Snapchat, on Victor's Bakery SD. So that's why I had to write it down here. On my own personal social networks, I have my one username on just about every single network. I had to settle for something else on YouTube and something else on Snapchat. But everywhere else, I'm that one name. Same thing for our companies. As soon as we get hired for a company here, we go and claim that name as soon as possible on all the big networks. And there's so many of them out there, again, others that you haven't heard about. And all of that, but those are the big ones to think about. Do you find people changing their names so that they can claim profiles instead of the other way around? Say that again? Or do you find people actually, like maybe a client comes to you and they have a name and then you realize they can't reserve that name, so will they change their name in order so that they can reserve their profile? Changing the name like in the address? Or changing the name of the business itself? Yeah, changing the name of the business itself. That might be a little bit too far. If I've got this Victor's Bakery that's been in my family business for 10 years, I'm not going to change it to accommodate Twitter. So I'll have to settle for Victor's Bakery SD, and that's fine. I'll just have to promote that as much as possible so that that rises higher than the, old, than the other Victor's SD that is not relevant. So any name is fine. Try to get the same name throughout, but any name is fine, but then use it and promote it to build more of a presence and authority content for it to rank higher. And the annoying part is that some networks that you write a long name like this, and some limit it to 10 or whatever, so you have to choose a shorter name anyway. I don't remember if I mentioned the... Uh, well, uh, one of our clients is this Italian food restaurant, Italianissimo Trattoria. It's a really long name. So over on uh, Twitter, it's Italianissimo T. That's as much as fit. There's no way around it. We could have done something like ITRSD, ITR San Diego. Sure, just about any name will work, but then you have to put in more of the effort to promote it and get it known. And so you might not be able to make it to the, S to the social media class, so I will give away the tidbit post something new and original at least once per week. A very basic thing right there. Facebook, Twitter, that applies to all the networks. The more you do it, the better. If you look at the uh, these companies, any kind of company, ones that are popular with lots of followers and such, they're often posting every day, a couple of times a day, several times a day. And the why of any of the social media, we're seeing its content. But it's also people that have followed you on these networks, they've agreed to be a captive audience. If they click that follow button, they want to know about you. They want to follow you. They want to see your tweets, your videos, your, your snaps, whatever. So you have a built-in captive audience. In the real world, a company would kill for that, for someone that says, yes, please market to me. In the real world, we're so annoyed with those commercials on TV, the commercials on the radio, the commercials in the newspaper, the commercials on the billboard. But in the digital world, I've chosen to see those Doritos posts every day. I want to see those commercials from Doritos so I can go buy the latest crazy flavor. So social media for a business is valuable because it is a captive audience. What to post is a deeper discussion for the other class. So we're at the end of the document there. Any questions on that document or whatever I've said so far? Yeah, okay, let's take our first break. Um, 7.17, we'll be back at 7.18. I'll turn the printer back on and then... Um, We'll uh, look at some more items here. We'll be back at 7, 8, uh, 728.